once you understand how to approach scale in two dimensions, transferring that process to three dimensions will come naturally. You will follow the same process you did on paper, but this time you will cut out the shapes from a pre-selected material and will then assemble them into a three-dimensional object. Here are some of the basic materials that we will be using in this tutorial. You'll need a utility knife, which is also called a box cutter, a metal ruler, a pencil, a cutting board, some kind of thin paintable material, anything you can paint like watercolor paper or mat board, thicker materials like foam core or cardboard, tacky glue, tape and or pins. We're going to start with a wall and we're going to look at it in two parts. The first part is the interior surface of the wall, which is what we measured and what we will call the facing. We will draw this to scale on a thin paintable surface just like we did in the drawing. My room has one wall smaller than the others, so the walls adjacent to it have a sloping edge on one corner. I have drawn the facing of my wall on mat board, which is a compressed fiber board often used for mounting photographs or drawings. If you find that you enjoy model making, I recommend that you try working with this material as it is very versatile and easy to find. It can be pricey from art stores like Dick Blick, but you can often find it cheaper at Michael's and sometimes even Walmart. Next, we will cut out the shape we just drew. If you are using poster board or watercolor paper, you may use scissors, but mat board will require a knife. For safety, always stand when cutting and always use a metal ruler with cork board on the underside. Use a utility knife rather than a delicate knife because it is heavier and easier to grip, which means it is less likely to slip. Hold the ruler with your non-dominant hand, checking that your fingers are not in the way. Press down gently with the knife. Carefully score the mat board by running the knife along the ruler. Score as many times as necessary until the piece is cut out. Repeat this process for the remaining two walls and the floor. Now that we have our pieces cut out, we have the option of painting them or leaving them as is. I painted this wall to match the actual wall of the room it was based on. I also painted a realistic wooden floor to match. You may use any medium you wish that is appropriate for the material you cut out on your own models. We won't go into specific methods for adding details such as molding or windows or wall texture, but I urge you to experiment with materials and methods. There is no right or wrong way as long as you follow the principles of scale that we discussed earlier. Now we need to provide some structure for the wall. Select a sturdy material that is easy to cut but does not easily bend. I am using foam core here, but cardboard is an adequate substitution for this tutorial. If you'd like to buy foam core, it's commonly found in the school supply section of most big box stores, but many dollar stores also have sheets for $1 each. Next, we're going to redraw this shape on a thicker material, but this time we're going to add a lip to some of the edges for both our walls and our floors. This is a picture of the facing material on top of the structural material of the finished model. You can see that the footprint of the structural material is larger. We do this because when we put the model together, we need a place to attach the different pieces to. You can see why we need a lip for structural integrity. The size of the lip will vary based on the location and the material we used. You will need to measure the thickness of both your structural material and your surface material in order to figure out the best size for the lip. First, measure the thickness of whatever structural material you're working with. This will be the width of your thick lip. Here, the foam core is one half inch thick. Next, measure the thickness of your thin facing material. This will be the width of your thin lip. My mat board is 1 8 inch thick. If you're using watercolor paper or something thin, the width of your lip is close to zero and you may just ignore references to it moving forward. Here you can see where I place the lip throughout the model in relation to the facing material. Now this all may feel a little complicated right now, but it will make intuitive sense to you after you make the physical model. But don't worry, for this tutorial I have broken it down for you. For the back wall, on the edges that meet the two side walls, add a thick lip. For the side walls, on the edge that meets the back wall, add a thin lip. For the floor, 
along the back wall and both of the sides add a thick lip. Remember, if you're using poster board or something very thin instead of mat board, your thin lip basically equals zero. Only add the thick lip. Cut these pieces out following the same method as you did for your paintable surface and attach them to your structural surface using glue or tape. Now we are ready for assembly. You may assemble the walls of your model using pins, tape, or glue. Pins work best with foam core models, whereas tape can be used for any kind of material. The benefits of using either tape or pins, or a combination of both, is that it is easy to disassemble the model afterwards. This is convenient for both storage and travel and shipping. Glue is cleaner, but it makes the model permanent. To assemble, simply hold two of the structural pieces together and push the pins in. Use masking tape along the seams. The back of the model looks quite messy, but that is okay for our purposes. Our model is only be meant to be looked at from the inside. You can always add a facing surface to the outside if its appearance is important to you. Try this suggested technical exercise. Create a model of your own using the drafting of the room that you completed in the previous chapter. Be as detailed as is useful to you. Don't be afraid to experiment. It's not precious. 